Let's bring in two experts on the situation in the occupied territories. We have Abdul Bari Atwan, who's joining us from London. He's the editor in chief of the online newspaper Rai Al Yum. But first, we go to the Middle East uh, to speak to the Middle East analyst, Daoud Kutab, who's joining us from Amman. Gentlemen, welcome to you both. Uh, Daoud, first of all, to you, sir, if you can. Uh, when we spoke a couple of days ago, I asked if the international community had let down the Palestinian. Let's start there. Where are we now on uh, Wednesday of this crisis? Well, I think we're still getting lip service and maybe a little bit more of the um, uh, upset. You know, the pictures on the screens, they are not happy for the Americans and the, the Europeans. And so they're trying to lower the, uh, the tensions or the, the visual tension, if I can say. They don't like to see children running away and being killed. And so they want uh, the, the fighting to continue but they just don't want people to see the actual victims. And it's really sad that uh, all the Americans could do is send an assistant deputy secretary of state to try to calm down the situation. That doesn't really mean that they're serious at all. Absolutely. Uh, Abdel Bari Atwan, let me bring you in here if we can. And, and some of what Dowd was mentioning there were the optics of this. It's a horrible word to use, but it's important when uh, war is televised. And the optics of this uh, are challenging to the United States and to Britain. You're in the UK. How have you seen the reporting of this from some Western media as to what's happening in the occupied territories? It is shameful, to be honest. You know, I have been living in this country for years. Uh, I'm, I'm shocked uh, how the media is ignoring completely uh, the, the, what's happening on the ground. And they are uh, presenting the Israeli as the victims. And Israel has the right to defense itself. They don't say that there are two millions in Gaza are besieged completely. They don't say that, you know, about 70 people were killed by the Israeli raids and uh, about 15 of them are children. So it is, it is really depressing. Uh, they are talking about uh, human rights. They are talking about, you know, uh, professionalism and journalism. And what we are seeing is completely different thing. It is, it, unfortunately, yeah, it, the media uh, and, and, and the Western world deteriorating. They are not really as fair as they used to be. They are not objective as they used to be. And still, they are taking the Israeli sides, which is, which is really shocking. Uh, and what do you put it down to, then, Mr. Bariatwan? Uh, we have obviously been looking at this situation for generations. I have been, been covering it for at least 10 years now, and I haven't seen a change in the way that it's reported. So what do you put that down to, as you say? There was meant to be a sense of fairness uh, now in 2021. You know, it's, uh, if, you, if you go back... Uh, a few years ago, uh, you will find this media is more objective, to be honest, and that they are actually very faithful to their uh, job, to their profession. But when, when it is now, I believe it is the Israeli managed to, to wash their brains and uh, to take them away from the roots of the problem on, on the Palestinian side. There is also other points. It is uh, There is no uh, action from the Muslim world. There is no action from the Arab world for the last few years. You know, they thought that the Palestinian story, the Palestinian cause is completely dead. But now the new generation, as your previous, uh, uh, Hanan Ashrawi said, you know, your previous guest, it is a new generation now in Jerusalem. Those people actually determined to change the whole equation, change the whole picture. And they are going taking the, 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 the strong position against the Israeli occupation, the eviction, the humiliation. And I believe this is, this is just the beginning. And we can see now Hamas in Gaza, other resistance groups are really dealing with the Israeli, the language they understand, which is force again. So Israel now is completely demoralized. We can see Israel now is facing a huge threat. Now, Israel is completely isolated from the whole world. No airports are open. The missiles actually hitting the Israeli in, in most of the cities there, in Tel Aviv, Haifa, Jaffa, Jaffa, everywhere. Mm. So that's, that will change, as I said, the equation. I don't believe this war will stop. I don't believe Israel, after this war, after this revolution, after this actually intifada, will be the same. It will be different, completely different Israeli. And it will be different Palestinian. Mm. Palestinian now lost their faith in anything so-called, you know, peace process. 
no peace, no coexistence with the people actually who want to evict the Palestinians, who want to actually kill the Palestinians, besiege them, starving them to death. Like what is happening in Gaza and other parts of Palestine. Uh, and Daoud, uh, if I can bring you in there, I mean, I'm sure much of that you agree with, but one particular point that uh, Mr. Bariatwan was raising there was the support that we hear uh, from the Arab world. Uh, we're in a very different place, aren't we, now in 2021 with that support for the Palestinians from the Arab world than we were in 2014 or 2007. And how much of a difference do you think that's going to make to how this thing all plays out? Well, there's one group that is really in bad shape. They have egg on their face, which is the countries like the Emirates, like the Bahrainis, like the Sudanis, and even the Moroccans to a lesser degree. They have egg on their face because they bet on uh, normalizing relations with Israel, and now their own people are pushing them to make statements against Israel and to support the Palestinian uh, uh, people who are being besieged and attacked in Al-Aqsa Mosque. So, uh, we're divided as Arabs. It's clear the Arab League issued a statement, but nothing more than that. They are in, in big trouble. And yes, in 2014, the situation was different. But, you know, as Barry and others said, we have a great um, young generation that is really much wired. They're on social media. They're in touch with progressives around the world. Yes, the classical media is out of the picture. But there is a powerful, uh, strong solidarity with the Palestinians that I've never seen around the world. Some of the actors, some of the dignitaries, some of the uh, 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 celebrities are all supporting Palestinians. I think this will be translated in power in the coming days and months and years. Uh, and Dad, I wonder if I can press you on that. How do you see that translating? I, I uh, am very familiar with the sort of the international of support for the Palestinian struggle all around the world. You see it from many places, particularly on the left. But that rhetoric has been around for years. And yet we're yes, seeing but, what are happening now. Yes, but all that was, uh, was monopolized by the classical media. Now the media has been bypassed. So even as Barry said, the, the regular media is not covering it, but, but people now have their own media. They found ways to break the uh, monopoly of the state-run media or the public media or even the commercial media. And I think that is what is happening in that uh, people are communicating, videos are going out, uh, TikTok is going crazy, Instagram is going crazy with videos and Facebook and Twitter. So we're seeing changes that are being carried by the young people and I think uh, the um, Palestinians have been united uh, by force, in a way, because of how much people love Jerusalem and Al-Aqsa Mosque. And that has united Palestinians in Israel, Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank and in the diaspora. In Jordan, where I'm staying now, I just came back from Jerusalem. There was huge demonstrations yesterday. And in other parts, I think, of the Arab world, there will be movement against uh, the... Um, basically weak and uh, ineffective Arab leaders, but we will have a much more change to see in the future, I'm sure. Absolutely, yeah. Okay, uh, Dad, let me give you the last word, Abdel Bari Atwan, if you can be as brief as you can, sir, because we are running short of time. But how do you see the next uh, couple of hours, days playing out now? When are we going to see an end to this fighting? Well, I believe uh, that this actually Israeli atrocities unified all of the Palestinian people, whether in the uh, territories occupied in 1948 or the West Bank and Gaza Strip, or even the diaspora. And now there, this kind of actually uh, unity is translated on the ground. And the, the whole scene is about to be changed. I believe Hamas and other resistance group has a lot of weapons, a lot of missiles, which they did not reveal yet. They did not use yet. So I can see this actually conflict. I believe this tension will continue for maybe weeks unless there is Israeli concession and unless there is a, you know, a fair mediator to, to put an end to this conflict. This, this, this is just the first round. Mm. And I believe there will be more rounds. Palestinians will never surrender. Okay. They, are, they had enough. They had enough. Okay, Abdel Bari Atwan uh, and Daoud Kutab, thank you, gentlemen, both. Uh, appreciate your analysis. Thanks for being with us.